What's up guys, JV2017 here and I'm bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. Today we are continuing my companion guide series with Nick Valentine, who is in my opinion one of the most interesting followers in the game. In this video we'll discuss how to get Nick, what his special stats are, how to max out his affinity, and also the effectiveness of his companion perk. Let's cover some general background info on Mr. Valentine before we jump into the details. Nick runs a detective agency along with his employee, Ellie Perkins, in Diamond City. I'm sure a lot of you already know that. Although he's not sure, he believes that he's somewhere between a second and third generation synth, which is why he doesn't serve the Institute and he's friendly. While most people hate synths in Diamond City, Nick gained everyone's respect after he rescued the former mayor's daughter from her kidnappers. As compensation for his services, the former mayor gifted Nick a house in Diamond City. Although he began working as a handyman just around the town, his detective skills were noticed and people realized that and started asking him to do detective work. So he eventually turned his house into his agency and then turned into the private investigator that most of us know and love. I'm not so sure it's specified how long he's been a private investigator, you know, the actual timing of those events. However, it was the former mayor, so we do know it's been a little while, but that's essentially where the story picks up with the sole survivor meeting Nick. And Nick Valentine's location is in the heart of Boston, in the Park Street Station location where Vault 114 is located. If you played through the main story, then you know this. You essentially get Nick by playing the main story. So you must complete the main story quest, Unlikely Valentine, that's where you meet him. And then you also have to complete the Getting a Clue main quest in order to have him as your companion. So I'm not really gonna go into detail on how those quests work because they are main quests, they should be self-explanatory, but you do have to complete them. You can't just skip to where Nick is in order to have him as your companion. And you can do this pretty early in the game. Honestly, if you just go straight to Diamond City to do Jewel of the Commonwealth and then ask around, talk to Piper, then she'll give you this quest. That's essentially how this works and it's very easy to do. Nick Valentine's companion stats are five strength, 10 perception, eight endurance, 8 Charisma, 18 Intelligence, which by the way is the most of any companion, 10 Agility, and then 8 Luck for a total of 67 Special Points. And so Nick's stats seem to be higher than most companions, and I think it is because he's a Synth. Any companion that's a Synth or you know something else special seems to have higher Special Points, but as I mentioned in several of my companion guides, I don't think these really matter. It doesn't really matter that Nick has the highest Intelligence because companions can't earn XP. They just level up at the same level as the character. Additionally, Nick has 150 carry weight, that's standard, so nothing special there, but he's also immune to poison and radiation, and I think that's just the fact that he's a synth. You know, he's not gonna be you know, susceptible to poison because that doesn't make sense. He doesn't have skin or blood. And also radiation, that doesn't make sense either. He's not gonna be affected by radiation. So additionally, Nick is special like Kate. He can actually do something. He has more utility in the game, which increases his value in my opinion. He can hack computer terminals. So if you need to hack into something, Nick is your guy and you don't have to take hacker. So that saves you some perk points. Whenever you need to hack into something, you just bring Nick along and he'll do it for you. However, it's not guaranteed that he'll be able to hack into it. You can just keep trying over and over and over until he gets into it, but sometimes it's not guaranteed that he's gonna get into something, which is a little frustrating. However, if you're making a different kind of character that's not focusing on intelligence perks and putting points into intelligence, then Nick is a nice guy to have around. Especially if you've never done a playthrough where you've taken Hacker or, you know, used Nick to get into terminals. It's nice to bring him around. He gets you into new areas. It's just really helpful. Now let's talk about companion affinity with Nick Valentine. And really, affinity is the loyalty system within this game for your followers. They react to your actions, choices, and dialogues. And then there's also a maximum amount of affinity you can reach with your companion. And that will grant you certain bonuses like a companion perk. So generally speaking, if you're trying to please your companion or get their companion perk, you'll need to do things that they like in order to increase this invisible bar, which unfortunately is not available in the game just on the surface. I think you can put in a console command to see it on PC, but that's just really a pain. Anyways, you need to increase this invisible bar up to a point to a thousand points in order to reach the maximum affinity, and that will grant you the companion perk. While you can't see that invisible affinity bar, you can kind of track your progress in the top left. You will see if you do something, you complete an action in the game, Nick will have a certain attitude towards it. It'll say he liked it or loved it or disliked it or hated it. And so obviously liked or loved will go up on the invisible bar, hated or disliked will go down. 
Fortunately, we do know the trends of what Nick Valentine will like or dislike, so we'll start with his general affinity, which is pretty much just general attitudes and kind of stances you can take in certain situations. So Nick likes it when the player is nice or mean. And I, I would say those are exact opposites. I'm really not sure about that. I referenced the official strategy guide for this information. And so that really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure why that's the case. He also dislikes it when the player is peaceful or violent, which again, I'm pretty sure those are exact opposites. You guys could you know, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but nice and mean and then peaceful and then violent are exact opposites in my opinion. So Nick is really all over the place. I wouldn't try to increase his affinity by using these general affinity choices, but that's the information and there it is. It's definitely easier to increase his affinity by following his specific affinity kind of attitudes. And so those are, he likes when the player donates items. So if you know the guy on the floor in Diamond City, if you give him some Nuka Cola, then Nick will like that, for example. He also likes it when you hack computers, obviously, because he does that himself. He likes it when you do it. So if you do take hacker and like Nick as a companion, want to increase his you know, affinity to get that perk, then take him along with you even if you do have hacker. He also likes it when you heal dog meat, which is the method we're gonna use in order to boost his affinity. I'll talk about that in a second here. Nick dislikes it when the player eats corpses, murders non-hostiles, picks owned locks, steals, or pickpockets. So basically don't eat anything that's dead, don't you know murder people that don't need to be murdered because they're innocent, don't steal. He is generally a morally good character, I would say Nick is. So over the course of a playthrough or a couple of hours, whatever your preference, you could follow his you know likes and dislikes to a T and then increase his affinity that way, or you could just boost it. And this is especially useful if you wanna stick with another companion for the majority of your playthrough, or you're playing a characteristically evil character that eats corpses, murders non-hostiles, and all of those things. So the way you can boost your affinity is by using dog meat. And with that in mind, of course, you'll need to recruit dog meat and you'll meet dog meat by doing the getting a clue mission. So you'll have him no matter what, if you already have Nick Valentine as a companion. So what you'll need to do is send both of your companions, Nick and dog meat to the same settlement. Then you'll need to make sure that you have plenty of stim packs and also make a bell. This is makes things so much easier. So just make a bell under the workshop menu and then we can start this process. So the way that you you boost your affinity is by ringing the bell. So you make sure that Nick and Dogme are in the same general area so Nick can benefit from this. Also make sure that Dogme is your companion. Don't make Nick your companion or else this won't work. If you shoot Dogme, everyone will start shooting you. So make sure Dogme is your companion and you send Nick to the same settlement that you're already at. Then you shoot Dogme, quick save, and then reload that same exact quick save that you just made and then repeat. So you're going to, in this order, shoot Dogme, quick save, reload that same quick save, wait through the really short loading screen, shoot dog meat, no, another quick save, and then reload that other quick save, and then repeat over and over and over. This is a pretty quick process if you have enough stim packs, you can boost Nick's affinity and most other companions affinity really, really high very quickly. This is definitely the most effective affinity boosting method. So once you've boosted Nick's affinity, you will get the close to metal companion perk and you'll see that you've gotten this in the top left. It'll say Nick really, really likes you and then you'll get close to metal. And so what this perk does for the player is you get one extra guess when you're at a terminal trying to hack something and then also 50% faster terminal cooldown. Honestly, I think this is one of the worst companion perks in the game because the reason you would bring Nick around, at least for utility reasons, is that he can hack stuff for you. So his you know, perk relates to hacking and hacker, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So it doesn't make sense that you bring Nick along with you and be a hacker, unless you just really like, like Nick as a character. I totally understand you know, people that bring him around because they like him, you know, what he says, they agree with what he says. I get that, you know, there is some role playing going on with this game. However, it's just not the most useful perk in the game. Hacking is already really easy. I've made a beginner's hacking guide. It's on my channel. I'll link it in the description below if you guys are interested and you don't know anything about hacking. And that's why you're interested in Nick. Once you've got hacking down, it's easy. And that's just how it's been since Fallout 3. And so honestly, having one extra guess and then 50% faster terminal cooldown, that's terrible because you could just back out any time and reset the terminal and have that extra guess as well because of this perk. That's just a useless part of that perk. And so 
I really don't like it. I wish they did something like more damage to synths. I think that would have been better because you can fight the Institute with Nick, but we don't have that. So if I were you, I would not max out his affinity for the companion perk. However, I would do it for his quest just for completion purposes. He does have a companion quest called Long Time Coming, and it will reveal more about his background. I'm not talking about in this that in this video because you can experience it for yourself, but you have to complete the main quest, Dangerous Minds, and also have a very fairly high affinity with Nick in order for him to give you this quest. It's a very cool quest. I encourage you guys to go and check it out. Also something I should have included in the earlier part of the video, you cannot romance Nick Valentine. You can't get him to sleep with you. You can't get that bonus with him. Unfortunately, I'm really disappointed. I'm really kind of a synth kind of guy. And so Nick was really kind of my target, but unfortunately you can't do that. Finally, I get some questions on my companion guides about gearing up your companions. What you know, weapon is best for this certain companion and those sort of questions. Honestly, I do not advise that you guys switch the weapon because the default weapon on every companion will have unlimited ammo no matter what. If you give them a weapon, you'll have to supply the ammunition. It won't be unlimited, and that's just kind of a drain on the own player's resources. However, you can put armor on them, and I think that's a good idea to give them some armor either to customize their looks or to help them with some resistances. I think that's a good idea. However, I usually don't do it because I like the way that they look in their you know, default outfits. If Nick wasn't wearing a trench coat, you know, is it really Nick? It's still Nick, but it doesn't seem like it to me. So I'd like to know after watching this video, are you gonna go out and get Nick Valentine? I mean, if you play the main story, you already have Nick, so he's not really one of those optional companions. He can be a companion, I mean, every companion's optional, but he's not one of those that you won't run into unless you completely avoid the main story. So do you guys think he's an interesting character to have around? I sure do, because he's got this unique perspective because he is a synth, and synths are really a huge thing in this game, and they're fairly new, you know, since Fallout 3 in New Vegas. I know there were synths in Fallout 3, in very you know particular situations, but they're much more abundant in this game, and this one is actually friendly. So I think he provides a unique perspective. Let me know what you guys think about Nick in the comments below. All right, guys, today I shared everything you need to know about Nick Valentine in Fallout 4, and next time we will cover Fallout 4 on my channel, so stay tuned for more Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it, and don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.